um, the Bible said that uh, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. I believe you can move too fastly. I believe you can move too quick. But I also believe that there ought to be an honor among us. There ought to be an honor among us for the Word of God and for the things of God. And there should be a reverence. Do you love Him today? Have you told Him you loved Him today? Have you said, Lord, I love you today? Praise God, I love Him today. And we as a people have uh, been so accustomed to this way of holiness. Wonderful song. There's a highway. Is that, that's Isaiah 35, isn't it? That there's, and we know our pastor, and we all want to pray for him today. But he's put that in our heart that God just uh, doesn't select any people. But he does have a people. And those people have found a way. And that way is a highway. What do we mean by that? Are we talking about Interstate 75? Are we talking about a, a Highway 301? What are we talking about when we say highway? We're talking about a way that's high above any other way out here. And it's uh, been elevated by God. Yes. And it's, it's been lifted up by God. And the church has found a little higher place than the normal path and the normal religious orders in this world uh, go. And so it's a highway. And the Bible said, And there shall be, and a highway shall be there, and a way. And in that way, you'll find a way you got to first find the place. And then when you find the place, you find a way. Yes. And in that way, it shall be called the way of holiness. And I know that rubs the grain, but God said, Be ye holy, even as I am holy. Do you know He's a holy God today? Amen. You think He just accepts anything? No, sir. You think you can just bring the scurvy to Him? You think... You can just bring the wounded to him, some sacrifice that's ill prepared, or, or or do we need to prepare our hearts today? Amen, brother. The Bible said the preparation of the heart and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. And in Psalms, uh, that is Proverbs 16, we know that we're to prepare our hearts. And our, have you prepared your heart for worship today? Have you prepared your mind for worship today? Because there's a holy way. It's high above any other way out here. And we've had the privilege. We just came out of a, a meeting that uh, the Lord used our pastor to open a door across town. And it was a good meeting. It was uh, good to go and uh, fellowship in an old Jewish synagogue. It used to be an old synagogue there. I kind of sat there this morning and closed my eyes and wondered how Moses would feel and how... Maybe some old Jew patriarch would feel being in what's called a synagogue. But it doesn't matter as long as he's there where you worship. Amen. It doesn't matter what it used to be, but what is it now? Uh, it, it may have been a barn. It may have been some location. But how many know when you find the body of Christ, as long as his name is there and he's placed his nature there, and He's placed His Spirit there, then it's all right for you and I to go and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for an opportunity. And we just don't know what good we'll do. We just don't know. Uh, we've learned over the years that uh, we're to be a charitable people. We're to have charity. And we, we've had brethren here. They're going to be here tonight. And they've announced this as a... Uh, a uh, uh, what they call it? A, a, a deliverance meeting tonight. And a uh, demon casting out uh, meeting uh, tonight. Well, I'm here to tell you God removes evil spirits every time we come together. I'm here to tell you that we're in a deliverance service today. Praise God. 
But it's all right because they're excited and, yes. and we want to be excited. Yes. How many want to be excited about what God is doing? Yes. And, and uh, I don't know how it happened. I think Brother Bill and Brother Marlowe uh, just happened to drop by. I don't even know why they were in the neighborhood. Uh, how they got over to 75th Street a couple, three weeks ago. How it happened. But we know our pastor, don't we? And he just walked in, I guess, right? I don't know if he had an invitation. I don't think so. But he just went in. And this dear brother, Brother uh, Stephen Erickson, uh, just felt something go out in his heart. And he went out in his, in his heart, and he, and he made a connection with Brother Marlowe. And, and, and that connection now has brought them here they were here a week ago and then brought them back again last night. And the brother from uh, India was here, Brother Daniel. And didn't he bless our hearts here last night? So we want to pray that, you know, the gospel must be preached. The gospel is going to be preached. I've often said the gospel is to, pre is, is, is to be preached indiscriminately. We're to preach the gospel indiscriminately. But the choosings of God are discriminate. Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? I we're to preach the gospel. And uh, we're not to criticize anybody. We're not to criticize religion. Yeah. We're not here to malign anybody. No. We're not here to castigate anybody. No. We're here the, to, to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. And Paul said, I'm not ashamed no. of the gospel. Amen. But I want you to notice this. You know, when Paul opened that, and we might just look at that in Romans 1, uh, when Paul opened that, when he preached to the Roman church there, uh, I want you to know that, that there was a difference there between Romans 1 and where Paul took it uh, into the book of uh, Corinthians. In Romans 1 now, he's, he's showing that he'd come to this ungodly city and that the gospel had to be preached in this ungodly city. And Rome was equal to Babylon. Yep. Rome was equal uh, to New York City of uh, today. And, and the world was in trouble. And, but the gospel, Paul said he was a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God. Yes. And uh, you can't do very much if you're going to present uh, a gospel that's separate from God. You can't do very much with a watered down, uh, diluted gospel. Uh, a, a gospel that's been diluted is not the gospel. A gospel that's been watered down by men's ideas is not the gospel. A gospel that brings in tendencies of someone's creed is not the gospel. The gospel that that, that, that uh, gets its roots uh, from an organization is not the gospel. The gospel that, that is a concoction of man's imagination is not the gospel. There's a lot of gospels being preached. But when you talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're talking about a message. You're talking about a message that built that early church. You're talking about a message that in, in, in the midst of the labyrinth of religion and in, in the midst of all the uh, world religions of Christ's day, the Bible said the world was, uh, was dark and, and that when Christ came, there wasn't very much life in that uh, religious world. When I say world, of course, I'm talking about the religious world. I don't know uh, anything about the... Uh, world out there, uh, the ungodly world, and I think when the Bible, much much of the time, not all of the time, but you have to be a Bible student enough to know that what world is he talking about? You have to know uh, enough scriptures. Paul said, "We understand by faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God." Well, that's that's one world, but 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 then there's another world. He said. Uh, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them, and they should be saved. What is that world? And when you see that uh, Paul said, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. What world was that? Why are we to think that Demas went to an ungodly world, and he visited the red light district, or he went out 
uh, in some bar and or he went out in what we call the world but Paul had built